Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to show you how the native dialect flow integration works. There have been quite a few people requesting a video about this. We did so in the past as well. But we also did a few updates and we wanted to be sure that you know how to properly use this integration because it's a really powerful way for you to create chatbots that will be able to react to more of users random inputs so to help with this the native integration with dialect flow which you can also use on a free account over at dialect flow itself for me for example i've been using it for three years and I've never reached any limits on the free tier but you can create your training agent you can connect that to the uchat workspace and once you did so you are basically good to go with creating the native integration so inside of my training agent, so if we take a look, and for this example, let's assume that this chatbot is a car dealership and a customer, potential customer, is searching for a particular car, right? So as you can see, I am searching for an Audi A3 from 2004, 1994, right? These are just a few parameters that I set up. But if we take a look at the actions and parameters inside of dialect flow, I also set all of these to be required, which means that if I say something like I'm searching for an Audi, then dialect flow needs to be able to ask for the model, but also the car year. And this is something that you can do directly inside of UJet. So the way this works, you can do this in two, two different ways. Basically you can, do this inside of the flow builder this is the first step um, but for me myself and i will show you really quickly as well i have set dialect flow as my default reply so that means every single time that the chatbot is not able to respond i send that request over to dialect flow dialect flow searches all my intents and see if a certain answer is matched if not, then I have a default reply set up inside of dialect flow to return to one of my flows inside of UChat. But this way, for me at least, this is the most efficient way. But that's because my niche is a little bit different. It won't work as well as for car dealerships, it could. But that's also the reason why I'm showing you how you can do this inside the flow builder itself. So if we go back, towards the testing flow. The way you can set this up is something like, let's say we're going with a question block and inside this question, we can say something like, we're going to save this to a custom field, like response in this case. And then we are going to hand it over to dialect flow, right? So in dialect flow, we trained the agent with the car intent and inside there are a few questions that we can ask so if we go towards an action block we can then go towards the integration section choose dialect flow es press the edit action and here we can set up the entire intent so we can select our training agent we can also do auto slot filling in this case we are going to enable this because we need that auto slot filling enabled right then we have the query text which we just say from the quest uh, from the question block inside of a custom field called response in this case so we're going to enable this but we can also test the query directly here so if we, we say something like i am searching for uh, an audi right we can then see how dialect flow handles this request so if we say test request you will see inside the sample data that the all required parameters are present is set to is set to null which means that we still need parameters right and we will then see the next question asked by dialect flow so dialect flow will ask what year and then we say for example year 2004 then we're going to test the request again and then you will see that it will state, okay, and what model? So let's fill in the model as well. Let's say in Audi A3, test the request. And now you will see that the all required parameters here is set to true because we 
fill all the parameters and we now have all the parameters filled in so we have the car year we have the car brand and we have the car model and as you can see it saved all these responses and we can map these values to custom fields that we set up so we could say something like okay the car year i already did so in advance so let's say car year right we're going to add this to the json path then i also want to save the car brand so let's do that as well so let's search for car brand there we go and then i want to also save the car model so let's do that as well car model and press add so now i have all the required parameters and i can save the values that dialect flow captures directly inside of custom fields so this is the way that you can save those values. You can test it directly inside of this module and then map the values directly towards custom fields. So let's test this out in, um, in a real life environment, right? So let's go with save. And then we can also say, we can give the feedback back towards the user requesting it, right? So we could say something like, we're going to publish this and then see if this works yes or no. So we are getting the question right. So let's say what car are you searching for? Uh, I am searching for an Audi. Then we need to fill in the slots. What year? Let's go just with 1994 in this case. And then it should also ask for the model. And as you can see, it works and ask for the model so we're going with an a uh, well let's just do an a3 and here you can see to be clear you're searching for the following car a brand audi model a3 and year 1994 and you can set this up within just three blocks inside of your flow builder you can ask one question and let the outer slot filling feature inside of the dialect flow integration request all the additional parameters that you set up inside of your intent so in this in this case we have the car brand the car year and the car model right so if i would say i'm searching for a car in the year 1994 then it should also ask for the brand and then for the model because we already captured the year in this case so this is the way that you can use it inside the flow builder so i set it like a default reply on the automation step as you can see here this is my training agent and then basically what it does is every single time that a chatbot cannot respond towards the user's text input it will hand it over to dialect flow dialect flow will search all my intents for the correct intent and I have quite a few if we take a look at the intents I just installed for example the small talk agent and as you can see I have five pages full of all kinds of intents and I'm adding to these every single time but if we take a look inside one for example the chatbot agent and then there are some training phrases like are you a bot you are a chatbot you are a bot you're a robot are you a chatbot are you a program then you will see that the parameter is chatbot right and recognizes as such and then you will see a custom payload called chatbot normally you would reply with a text response but you can also refer back towards a particular block that you have set up inside of your flow you can do this with this custom payload so you will have an open curly bracket then content open curly bracket go to and then you just name the block that you want to refer to so in my case this is chatbot and if we take a look at my flows i'll go to my ai responses flow so i named all my blocks right and as you can see here this is the block called chatbot so i should get something like this so let's test this out so we're going back towards the messenger channel and let's say are you a chatbot then dialect flow will reach out will figure that intent out and then it should refer back towards uchat to that single block and as you can see 
that GIF is now being posted and along with the text that I set up. So, ugh, the chatbot is such a general name, call me Virtual Mark, right? So you can have some fun with this as well. But this is a great way to set up a default reply because if we take a look back inside of UChat, inside the flows that I set up, if for some reason the dialect flow agent cannot find the right intent, you will also see if we go back towards intents that we have a default fallback, right? So this means that if dialect flow is not able to match the intents, then it will revert towards this default fallback. And as you can see here in the site, the default fallback, I'm referring towards a default reply block inside of my chatbot in UChat. And if we go back there, you will see that it equals to rewards this one. So whoops, I was not able to catch your input there. To help you further, press the first button to go to the main menu or the second to talk to me, right? So this way you can just set up a complete single flow of all kinds of AI responses. And you can use the custom payload feature inside of Dialect Flow that you just built to refer to a specific block inside of any flow that you set up. As long as you name the block properly, it will reach out to that. And the power inside of UChat is, because as you can see now, I'm inside my omni-channel chatbot. So if I were to go towards um, Instagram, for example, WhatsApp, Telegram, it should all respond with the exact same uh, response. So inside of Telegram, I would get the same response as in Messenger and so on. So I hope this video helped you out into figuring how to use the native integration of Dialect Flow. If you want to know more about connecting to it, we have proper documentation as well, which I will link in the video description. And if you like the video, consider dropping a like because it will help us reach more people and discover the power of UChat. In this case, with the power combined with Dialect Flow to create much smarter and intelligent chatbots. If you want to be notified of more of these kinds of videos, press the subscribe button and the bell notification to the right of it. For now, have a great day, take care and talk soon.